All right, map one is done, and Envy takes it. Showing strong on cash. Of course, it was their selection of map. But our three gentlemen here on the NVIDIA Expert Desk, how did you guys view that matchup? Envy versus TSM, map number one. It could have gone either way. That's the first thing that I want to say. We talked about device losing those three one-on-one -on -one situations, which could have changed the game. Also, a lot of fans or uh, people who bet skins for TSM are going to be like, yeah, we should have won. But we didn't. Like, the reason you didn't is because Envious is just Envious. They win rounds that sometimes they shouldn't win. Well, they were 5 1 up on their CT side. And then yeah. with the turning point there was Kiyoshima Kiyo. winning the 2 on 4 situation yeah. for his team. He got all four frags as well. He was hitting off that game. He was like doing everything he could. Every single situation he was in, he's getting entry kills, finding frags out of nowhere. And that was kind of true for the whole Envious team. No one was slacking in that team. Kenny S was firing all, all the cylinders as well. We saw a lot of big frags from them. And their T side, we talked about how explosive it can be. Their A takes. Almost every team knows how they approach that bomb site, but no one seems to know how to contain them. They can just enter there all together, contain one area of the bomb site, and they get the frags every single time. It's really impressive to watch, and it's, it's a scary force. Ten rounds as T side of cash is very impressive. Yeah, Fifth, how did you view that game? I mean, is it a is it a map that TSM should have won? Is that how you think it should be looked at, or do you think Envy well deserved, even if it was that close? I mean, just basically, first of all, Envy won a lot of clutch situations. It just comes to show how good these guys are when it comes to these uh, situations. And then, obviously, TSM devised that last three rounds, ended up losing three one-on-ones. Oh. Uh, and that, um, the, that thir the, last, uh, the third last map or map or round, where Device actually TK'd the, the player on uh, back of sight, and then obviously then losing, ending up losing the round. Uh, but then you can just put it the other, both ways, right? Yeah, TSM ended up not winning these and then Envy just capitalizing from their mistakes. Overall, it was a very good game for, the, for Envy. Just came, I was sitting in the back and I was like, these guys shoot so hard. And it's like, <laughs> if you don't get that one shot, you're basically dead. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. So many rounds came down to those 2v2s, 2v1s, 1v1s by the end of it. I, I think more than half for sure in that matchup. What does that say about these two teams matching up against each other in rating? It just shows that this is two teams of high individual players, yeah. all 10 of them. Like, every 10 player on this server, they can do damage, they can win these rounds alone. Like, Kiyoshima single-handedly winning that 2 and 4. As you said, Henry, I think that was the turning point because TSM really set, uh, seemed to have a very good read on them. Also, one of the rounds, KGB is the rotator from B, playing three guys on the ASCT. And yet, as we play on just address, that A take from Envious is so, just so strong. So it just shows the individual performances of the players insanely high. All right, well then moving on, we're, we're ready to jump into that game very shortly. It's going to be just two. Now we talked about it earlier. Cash was Envy's pick though, right? It was close, Envy won. But Envy also selected that just two. Fifth, it is TSM's pick. But I mean, this is one of those maps where if the other team's good too, anything can happen, really. Yeah, well, one thing for TSM now is that they need a really good CT side. Bay coming back over from, from Envy, you saw how good Envy was on their on their T-side on cash because they have so many good individual players. And if TSM is not on point here on their CT side, they're not going to have a good time switching over to their T-side, having, you know, just narrowly losing cash. It's going to bring a little bit of a ghost, ghost kind of uh, aspect in their brains, right? And then their T-side, this is the strong point that TSM have on this map. I'm not saying that they're bad T-side a team, but they rely heavily on their CT side. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I talked about it before in the, the pre-game. Their Dust2 CT setup is formidable. They're very good at reading opposition. You saw the amount of homework they've done on this team. We saw the essays being read before the game. So they, they, they know what uh, Envy is going to bring to the table, but there's not really much you can do to counter the way these guys are playing right now. How fast they are with the, the AWP, for example, on Kenny S, and Kiyoshima, his entry kills with the, the AK then, there's not really much you can do. You can theorize all day what to do in strat to out to anti strat that, but if they're hitting that hard, you can't really lock that down. I mean, speaking of the essays, I'm pretty sure I just saw Kerrigan with like a thesis in his hand instead of just one essay. He's got a whole pack ready, uh, making sure that, of course, especially as a leader, I, I would assume, knowing all his you know corners and making sure that he knows all the foundation going into this one. Kadian, are we still in good hopes for a third map finally in the playoffs here? Theoretically, yes. My only worry is that they are so hot right now, Envious. Yeah. That's a big problem, right? I mean, theoretically, you, you go, okay, so the map pick of, of Envious, 16-13, cash. That was actually a really close game. Then you get the pick of TSM, so that should be a better map for them. But you just 
as Henry said, you can't really anti strat these headshots. I mean, when, when these guys are unpwned, they're just unpwned. I feel like TSM, though, are way better at controlling the map on, on, this, on this specific map compared to Cash. So I think they'll have a better advantage of locking out uh, players and isolating them in bad positions. Now, uh, as we continue to look at these two teams and comparing them, I can't help but think also the fact that we always highlight, well, okay, Kenya and Apex coming back, and then we talk about all, all the other players too, but Envious is that team that you mentioned the roster as a whole, but still it's always the spotlight on each player. Whereas TSM, yeah, we're not taking anything away from them individually, but it's always about the whole team or the composition, the history they have together fifth. Do you think that's where we're seeing that edge come out? Because you guys mentioned, I mean, Envious is the one winning those clutch rounds when it really comes down to the individual sense and skill. Yeah, normally, I mean, first of all, TSM uh, device is their star player. Yeah, I'm sure that people saw some uh, a tweet there that he's not playing with his correct mouse and stuff. Right. And and in, in general, yeah, that does affect you. Uh, and it's probably going to affect him as well. Losing three in a row, it's not going to it's not going to set well uh, in in his mind. It's coming in dust too, knowing that well, you know, if maybe if I had my my correct mouse, I would have potentially won all these rounds, right? And then coming in there, but the Dupree uh, was still playing good um, on cash. Sipnix is obviously their, their support player, but he was known for having a very good a hold on cash, and you you saw that he got picked apart because of Envy's individual players. So that will be an, be a problem coming into Dust too. You heavily need to rely on for TSM now in their teamwork and not just about your shooting hands, because as you can see on on that cash game, Envy. Right now, they have better individual players than TSM has overall in terms of five versus five, individual versus individual. And we, they are a, a much better individual team. So then for TSM, they need to mainly rely on their teamwork here coming into us too. And, and compared to some of the previous games we've seen with NVS in the past, this time it was very well defined who's playing the AWP so far. It has been Kenny. Yep. I'm very happy to see that, that it <laughs> hasn't been this happy show where when he wants to, he just takes it away from Kenny and then Kenny must just be rifling and do something else. I like when the main focus of the AWP on this team is on Kenny. Yeah, absolutely. You can't take anything away from him when he's playing in the form he is right now. And that's exactly why he plays the AWP. Cash is one of his main maps he can do that on. But moving on to Dust2, that's a different kettle of fish, I'm afraid. This is one of the best orb maps. It can be so explosive. It can open up bomb sites. It can defend almost every single area on the map as well. It's, it's going to be a really crazy showing for him. One thing for Nova TSM, they run a very good dual orb setup sometimes. They have Cajun B, who can be very formidable on this map as well, the AWP. Also the Scout as well. They're one of the, the, the great teams of doing the second on this map. Okay, well, as you can see, all 10 players now getting ready in the warm up for Dust 2. Can TSM climb back into the semifinal for another shot at going to the finals finally at a major, or will Envious just steal it away with another 2 0 here on the scoreboard in the playoffs? Let's find out at ESL1 Cologne 2015. All right, thank you very much, Trover, and thank you very much. And with the rest of the analysts at the desk, especially Mugatu, who made a guest appearance all of a sudden because, you know, Envious, they're so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> please, please keep it up. Dust 2, Moses, tell us. Um, I'm so excited for this. They picked the map TSM, are they going to win it? Yeah. Oh, all right. I, I think... Oh, okay, that, no discussion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I, well, I think they're the best team in the world on this. The, the scary part, actually, is that, I mean, pe this whole matchup is just kind of crazy because we've seen Envy, new rosters started out so good with that win at IEM, and now they've moved on and they just keep improving. And it's like, when are they going to stop? And this is the map that TSM, uh, they have to stop them on this one. It's their best map. It's their home turf. Apex starting it off with huge aggression up mid. What is going on? We've never seen anything like this. He rushes back up and then falls back up to his teammates, three of them on short. This is a crazy round for Envy, but somehow it seemed like TSM were halfway aware that it might be happening because they were playing very defensively. And now at least a little bit of the power of this round has been taken off. But they still are all alive. To me, that speaks of just how comfortable Apex is right now on this team. That when he starts rushing up mid, trying to look for the aggressive battles to get the fights, that's pure Apex. And so we can see just why Envious are such a formidable team right now. But already Apex, you know, speaking of him, he's been dinked down to 27 HP at the start. So Team Solo mid, we'll see if they decide to follow up on that. The bomb currently waiting in mid, and a fourth man making their way out with the other three. 
Now they're starting to lurk, and now they're starting to look for that pick. And this is sick. They put up that smoke device, takes down Kirishima with a shot in window. Apex drops in the B bomb side. The retake is on, but Kerrigan's in the middle. He drops one, he drops two, and that's going to be it. He picks up another gun, tries to get Kenny, almost going to be there. Kerrigan, some kind of superhero. Now it's down to Kenny in a 1v4, and that bomb is ticking away. There's nothing you can do. Kerrigan looking for the triple, still alive. And Kenny, knife is out. He's not going to get it. There's still no time here for Kenny to clutch this round. TSM playing it safely, and this is very smart. Flashbang on in, Kenny walking through, the smoke goes up, but he might as well almost save this kit. There's nothing much he can get out of this round. TSM take the pistol with style. And there was just one detail that's very, very sexy about this round. They put up the smoke once they're already in middle. They don't throw it from outside of the headshot box, and that offsets the timing for, T for Envy. Otherwise, they hear the smoke going down, they might know what's coming, but by the time they know because of the smoke timing, it's too late. Yeah, and crucially, to, to have the ability to just walk out mid like that, you could see how cautious they were. They had to make sure they pushed back NB Can Cat so he didn't have the intel. They gooshed Apex, he was forced to play more passive, and with the control that that small amount of damage bought them, they're able to just walk out mid for free. I think you're spot on. I think you're completely 100% right. They realized, okay, Apex, we dinked them. He's low. He's going to play passive. Let's take advantage of this. Kerrigan with a perfect call in that situation. And that is a key round now picked up by Team Solo Mid. As we can see, they have the guns going into this round. But, you know, I want to say that, but then when it's Envy in play, you never really know. They go for the force buy on their side. NBK with his trademark scout at this point. I always worry when people sl play slow against uh, force-ups like this on Dust2 particularly. I feel like there's such a big chance you're going to run into even sometimes two scouts. Well, this is, this is much the same. Just walking out mid, not seeing any presence, and, and they're going to have two players isolated in this B-bomb site. So a huge advantage for TSM, especially now they take down Kiyoshima. And there goes Apex. B-bomb site is up for grabs. And you, like, look at that device. He doesn't even need to go in. They got the both kills. He's going to start looking for the rotation coming in. But it's just not going to happen here for Envy. They know that they've lost control of this site. And the likelihood of them retaking B, three players alive, down on firepower, it's just not going to happen. So save the guns, save the gear that you have. And maybe if you want, you know, look for an exit kill. We already have a man lurking here, and that's Cajun B. <laughs> and he's about to get some joy. Actually, this is so sick. Ooh. Well, never mind. It, it is so sick that Happy <laughs> does a 180 and gets the kill. That's right. That's what I meant to say. Wow. I just like that Cajun shows some patience. He's like, ah, oh, okay, Happy didn't check the corner. Great. Let me see if I can get another one. If two guys are here, boom, he could get both of those kills. But it wasn't, uh, wasn't meant to be. It's, it's great play right up until the end, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crucially, much like Cash as well, Kenny S not buying armor on that second round, so they're going to want the up on him in the fourth. But with his current economy and the way it worked out in the last map, it's more than likely going to be a glass cannon AWP if he decides to go that route. I think he absolutely has to. I think he has to get that up, and he has to start establishing dominance. CT side, that's, that's when he's got to shine. Yeah, but I don't mind. On Dust 2, the glass cannon is more better because it's so hard to grenade down orphans on this map. They can stand in so many positions that you'll never hit with an HE grenade, so I could be all right with that. Pretty fast round coming out here into the B bomb site. Kyoshima and Apex are holding, but it's Cajun and Dupree pushing forward, trying to see if they can get in here. And eventually they're going to overwhelm the bomb site. It's going to be a 4v3 here. Bomb should be going down, and again, it's very difficult for Envy to do anything about it. But NBK hasn't really got anything done with the scout. Kenny goes down trying to push on in, and it's on Happy and NBK. Yeah, some really good, some really good entries into that into that B bomb site. Crucially, not not committing to fights against these pistols, this medium range that can be so deadly against you know the five sevens, the P250s, the CZs. They're just they're just shoulder peeking these boxes and making sure that they don't get punished by it. Let's see. I mean, NBK. We've seen what he's capable of with the scout armor combo, so he's not too worried. He's just going to back off and try and save this gun and be amazed if he decided to upgrade in the next round. He can certainly stay on this and have an impact in the next round, but that's all they can really hope for at this point. Envious, no early luck for them. Team Solo mid, two on point. Is it going to be five rounds again before Envy start to really go mad? I really feel like this is the trend at this How point. How crazy would that be? Like, it's just, they, okay, they're feeling it out. What's the pace? How are, we, how are TDSM setting things up? And then they're just, they're just downloading. And once they've got everything they need, boom, you know, <laughs> they just blow up. Well, let's see. I mean, there's Kenny with the glass cannon, so he did actually prioritize the sniper rifle. Device has upgraded to his own AWP. And there's the shot. There's the tag. Kiyoshima down to 19 HP at the beginning of this crucial round for Envy. 
Happy to have it up in a position that's very useful if you're gonna be encountering a B split push. So maybe that's what enemy are thinking. They have already been uh, been losing to that B push a couple of times, so it's not unreasonable. TSM on Dust2 have such a strong long take. If they can get out and get control of the pit area, moving into the A bomb site, it's it's such so, so very effective. But look at MVK trying to use this jumping scout. He does tag one, but he can't convert the kill. Zipnix takes him down, and this the. the and this is what's even worse right now. There's a wall of smokes up. So even if somebody was peeking from A site, for example, they have no information apart from what NBK saw. So who's who's going to be left? Who's going to be left on A site? Is it going or A long? Is it going to be clear? Did they leave a lurker behind? There happens to be an op. There's a little bit of info now for Envy to work with. There are still a lot of Molotovs left on TSM three. They just used the fourth one. They got a lot of utility to try and play this round through. They really want for Kenny to peek right now, and the bomb still dropped over in the. Long house there, so we'll see if they can make it work. About 35 seconds left. Yeah, and Looks here comes this Mol Molotov execute onto the A site. They can force Kenny S out of the site. He's only got an AWP and not very mobile, so these Mollies can do a lot of damage. Oh, and they lose Happy as well. Kenny's gonna have to pull a miracle here. The grenades, they start raining in. Flashbangs and smokes first. When there's smoke, there's fire. The Molotovs are gonna follow up. Dupree is gonna be taken down. Kenny Apex falls, and it's all on Kiyoshima. He did it so many times on Gash. But um, in a 1v3 like this, it doesn't seem likely. And because, because Kiyoshima got tagged early on in the round, we saw him on cash those rotations from the B bomb site, able to bail his teammate out just in the nick of time during these executes. But because he's so low on HP from the start of the round, he has to play it passive. He can't get into those gun battles. But contrary to what we saw on cash, uh, from TSM at the end, where they were all running one after another onto a site. If Kenny got a kill like that, he'd have time to set up for the next one, for example. This time around, that, that execute onto that A site, everybody was stacked for TSM. So they lose one member, boom, instant reflag. Oh, they lose another, boom, headshot, right? Like, they're just not letting Envy chain up any kills and turn the tide. TSM, they were not to be denied that round. They will be picking up that key, for, that key round, essentially, is going to give them four total. And now Envy, they've got a bit of a decision to make. Do they go for the force or not? And it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're going to decide to play safe. It, I know what's going to happen in the sixth round. So um, <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like it's a trend. We've got we found a pattern here. The the envy pattern. It's like a Hulk thing going on. You know, you poke at them for a long time, and suddenly you know the the pulse just keeps rising, and they they go mad. But they're not green. They're blue, right? It's a, it's a, it's a French kind of Hulk. Five rounds in, a minute and twenty. Five seconds, a couple of Molotovs still left on TSM here, and they're going to be taking a very, very default approach to this round. Controlling long, controlling upper dark end, clearing out middle. This is what Dust2 is most of the time, in, at least initially. What a huge focus on mid right now from Envy as well. Kyushin has actually left the B site to support Apex and Happy. Happy and Apex, they've set up the crossfire as we can see. Holding close, they want to get the headshots, they want to put those CZ75s to use. But uh, TSM, this time around, aren't trying to sneak their way out. Instead, they're just slowly, methodically clearing out the map. Nice nade onto NBK as well. This is one of his favorite spots to make use of that scout. It's so effective here. You're looking for that headshot as they try and push up. He's going to go down to Carrigan, and Apex will fall as well. Kiyoshima gets shut down, and Carrigan with the reverse jump into CT spawn from Catwalk. A strategy that's very cool, not just when you're playing against pistols, but also in a more regular rounds here. So Kenny and Happy, what's the best they can do in, their, in, in a round? What can you get out of a round like this, Moses? Just try and grab an AK-47, maybe get really lucky and find that AWP, but TSM, those are things that they, they're really good at not allowing to happen. But Kenny's in position, Zipnix is going to clear it. Kerrigan does fall, so there's the AK-47. Happy's able to save that, but they're already on the hunt from Catwalk. Yeah, they, I'd be amazed if they let him actually sit for five. And yeah, he would have had to fight his way through. He had to hit a huge headshot on the Zipnix, but Zipnix, unfortunately for Happy, caught Happy midair. So no chance there for Happy to have an impact. And now we go into the big round here. After the first round by, it's going to be this one here for Envy. Still no rounds on the board, but this time they have all the money they need to get fully equipped. Kind of surprised at the lack of Molotovs in use here, actually, on their part, really favoring the HEs. Yeah, well, five Molotovs for TSM, their money is is rising. It's huge, and there's a shot that doesn't connect somehow, but device, Kenny S might have gotten away with one there. I love how fast they are. You're talking about this long take instantly. NBK is down, and there's no backup at all. Kenny up in the bomb site here. A lot of other teams in the current metagame will actually push three people along and double grenade and a Molotov that long entrance just to prevent the terrorists from coming out. And maybe Envy should think about changing it because TSM are showing that 
If it's just MBK there, they're, they're willing to take that fight. Well, that is such a sexy smoke put up by Apex, but it's just not going to work. Dupree finds a shot from Lower Dark, and that was very cool. Now it comes down to Kiyoshima, alive on Plateau, missing shots, TSM, they're not going to be able to hunt him down, but Kerrigan takes out Kenny, that's going to weaken things further. Kiyoshima finally manages to pick up one, gets two before he's overwhelmed. But the key frags come through, and TSM now, they've got all the info they need. They managed to pick off the A defense, and so rather than take the risk of running into Kiyoshima on that B site, they are going to be rotating that bomb back around towards the A site, and the timing just doesn't work out for Kiyoshima. If he'd have been able to pick off the bomb carrier in that rotation, that could have been the master stroke. But it's just not meant to be, and Device not going to miss that shot. Headshot with the AWP. The curse has been broken. Yeah, they get the six. They've thrown us off. So TSM's figured it out. I mean, this is just their dust, too. At the moment, they're just picking Envy apart all across the map, and it all stems. The two gun rounds, they've just gone out long. They've gotten that opening kill, and that provides so much control. You see Apex tries to find some information, tries to make a playoff catwalk behind that, but just can't do it. And now look at this. Envy has bought up some armor, some upgraded pistols. They do have the full losing bonus, so next round's going to be a good buy no matter what happens. But trying to do some damage, and TSM has been great at preventing that in this half. Ooh, Apex with the push lower. He catches Dupree. That's an AK now for him to work with. He's got the Kevlar as well, so he's going to be a bit of a threat. TSM, however, after clearing out long, they're going to decide to push up. Nice nade onto NBK, who continues to sit at zero frag, so he's not pleased with this. But a man advantage for TSM going onto the A site. Happy playing close here. C set in hand, not going to make it work. Carrigan will take him down and should be trivial from here on out, even if they're a little bit low headshot from Apex, though, on Carrigan. And Sipnix putting down the bomb. They have a Molotov, but Apex puts it up maybe a little bit too low. And actually, in that position, it's definitely not going to do anything at all. Sipnix ready and waiting for it. Apex with a half-hearted jump. Is he going to try for it one more time? Device down on long. Spots the man coming out. Still handling the shot. And Sipnix going to have to do it all on his own. Gets the headshot. Sprays again. And Cajun coming up from behind. Seven and zero. What a start here for the... Danish team. This might be the first time in the playoffs that we have a third map. Moses, you sounded very confident in this TSM win on Dust 2. You may have been dead on. Uh, they're so good on this map, and you can see why right now. Just feeling confident as well behind everything. They're, they're much more convincing when they're trying to take portions of the map, much more convincing when they're trading, entering bomb sites. And I think... You're exactly right. The switch up is to put three players at long now because they've only been sending NBK and he's been punished and coming into this gun round, they want to make sure that didn't happen, but this time TSM switches it up and they don't go long. Well, they decide to sit back and wait. Zipnik's playing that passive, hoping to see a little bit of overaggression coming out from Envy, maybe a little bit of a panic push. That's just not meant to be. Happy will get in a bit of a clever spot here, not one that we see used too often these days with NBK there to support him. Yeah, right there in the boxes. But TSM aren't interested in pushing long at all right now. They're, they're going to get mid control and they might even start thinking about Cat. They do have to clear that out if they want to start heading towards B. And this is where it's, it's wonderful to just appreciate how well this is being called by TSM because you can see there is really no mid control right now for Envy. These two people on the bomb site, they need to land some very, very good early frags. Otherwise, they could end up just getting completely overwhelmed. Pushing out long, pretending that it's going to be a push there. Everybody exiting B. What is going on? Kyushima coming back in and realizing there's been a huge mistake, but he gets a kill. He's almost out of bullets. Apex shows up. What a turnaround. Envy, they pick up the first round and make it 7-1. and one. That was TSM almost completely outplaying Envy in that round, but... Kiyoshima, what a hero. Yeah, he just saved it there, didn't he? Yep. I mean, he was helping Apex uh, mid just to get that info that we were talking about. They have no info mid. What does Apex do? He tries to push out, and Kiyoshima is setting up the flash for him, right? So that they can try and get an idea of what TSM are up to. Kiyoshima catches on just in the nick of time, realizes what's happening, gets back onto that site to save the day. And they're going to be out long once again. Quick here, TSM. They go back to what worked earlier, but there's three people, almost a fourth here for Envy. And look at this, they're getting shot down. MBK, double headshot to boot, and it's Cajun and Carrigan left. This is where the French finally get back into it. Our third headshot, MBK shutting them down, and Carrigan alone tabs away Apex, but Kenny's there to block it off, and we're looking for 7-2. All right, well, here's where the second act of this match really occurs, because... Envy has found, they've pushed three long multiple times, they've caught him off guard, whether it was going to be a fake with just one out that time, they completely shut down the long play. So where does TSM go from here? Oh, we've got a bit of a crowd cheering for Envy, I like that. They think they need it right now, they're still five rounds behind. 
but we'll see. Now, TSM must realize that they've been discovered over on that long play. So what else could they have in the bag here? We haven't seen that many catwalk plays from them. They've had some success going out mid with the mid control. Uh, there hasn't been too much of it from Envy. Only on their, on their eco rounds or their force buys have they really put players there thinking that that's kind of the anti-eco strategy out of TSM. But look at it once again. Look how far away all these Envy players are from mid. There's a lot of space there for TSM to work with. If they feel confident in probing that portion of the map. It's all going to be on Kenny, essentially, to try and keep an eye there. But of course, if that smoke goes down, he's going to be very limited in what he can do. Smoke goes down to block off Kat as well, so Kerrigan, they are going to go through uh, clearing that position, and there it is. Kerrigan actually getting up here, getting that info for his team, so now they know, okay, we can go for the B because there can't be a very fast rotation coming out from Envy from this position. Well, they're sneaking out middle, but it's interesting to see that Kiyoshima is actually the other part of this double up setup right now for Envy. Would have thought maybe would have been happy instead, and we'll see if this is going to work. Look at the clock here as well, 40 seconds now. Apex and Kiyoshima in that bomb side. They could get sandwiched in a very ugly way. Kenny can't find the shot easily, and now the smokes are going to come up. Can they do it again? Kiyoshima and Apex inside the side. Kenny actually lands a shot on Dupree. Kerrigan is down in CT spawn as well. He's trying to take this fight. They're right next to him, but Happy shots him down, and it's going to be a refrag. Apex inside the bomb side. They're handling this like champions, Envy, and it's going to be Kenny to shut it down. What a hold. That was beautiful discipline and patience inside that B bomb site. The execute from TSM was actually really clever. They throw the mid B smoke, wait for the counter flashes to come out, and then re execute it, but still bailed out by some really disciplined play in that B site. No one gets over aggressive, no one peeks. They let the battle come to the choke points. Apex taking a bit of trick out of uh, existence, uh, book it seems. Throwing down that smoke to block off the doors. Either you run through window or you come in through Upper Dark. But guess what? Kiyoshima's waiting with the op watching Upper Dark. They focus, they turn the focus on the defense towards that Upper Dark Passage. Eliminate one half of the pincer, the rest of it's gonna be weak. And in the meantime, you've got Kenny pummeling them. This is sick play from Envy. And TSM now, they've got their backs to the wall. They go for the force buy here. Device does manage to get an AWP, so that's the big firepower. But it still means that two players for TSM are on pistols. Not that much. You know, I love to see Device trying to see if he can open it up here, but if you're fighting Kenny in an op op battle, you've, you've really got to bring your A game. There's no room for any kind of mistakes. Happy set, set up in the corner, which is so nice, and it's very easy to throw your pot flashes for yourself here, but look in CT spawn. That's Dupree sneaking in through the smoke. Kenny, is he going to realize? They could be shooting at him from two angles. He's going to look for the shot, he actually gets tagged down to 31. MBK comes in with a the shot there, gets a double before he goes down, and Kenny helps out. Dupree close, and he drops. Kenny now, it's Happy on the bomb site. it's a 2v3. If Happy dies, it might have been a chance there, but Dupree's going to get tagged, and Cajun, he sprays down one, at least a chance for a bomb plant, puts up the Molotov, they can't really stop him, they've got a Molotov of their own, and Apex, is he going to get the angle right? He gets a shot instead, no bomb plant, a fourth round in a row here for Envy, they are not going to let go of this map easily. No, and TSM might actually be forced to save here, they've been completely figured out, now they've They've lost four in a row, so Envy, that defense, it took a little bit longer to click in this time, longer than those five rounds, but now they've figured it out. A little bit of a buy-up with Tech 9 and Armor. What I think would be really clever by TSM, if they know the amount of space that's in mid, there's a smoke you can throw from Catwalk that lands on the CT ramp. It's basically the mid-B smoke, just on the other side of spawn. YOLO! Here it begins! It's going out onto the B site! Yeah, TSM now, it's just going to be the pistol buy for them. Kiyoshima holding its stake, though he's going to be able to pick up only the one before Zipnik shuts him down. Apex at the doors, not stopping the bomb plant. He can't really do anything about this because the angles are going to be covered by TSM. Molotov, however, is going to be forcing out the corner. It's actually going to be roasting his teammate alive! But Kenny and Apex, they're doing the damage, and it's a great retake coming in for Envy in the end. What a push, <laughs> what a play, but that one Molotov was happy to talk about the shock. That could have been the worst Molotov of all time. <laughs> if that had killed Happy, that would have been... Disastrous. Yeah. No, not that sure. They're actually fortunate that, that so much damage had been done to that Molotov with him just cooking in there. If there was more HP on the TSM players and they were able to survive some of those, some of those fights, that could have turned around quickly. But either way, here's the full buy up on device. Full nade kits for all the other members of TSM. Do they go cat again, though, TSM? That's, that's I'm wondering. Kenny has been starting to play from cars more often than not, watching cat being able to support long, but he has that op in that key position. I'm really curious to see if TSM are going to start making cat the focus here in the last few rounds of this half, because they haven't really touched it too they, much uh, in the really, beginning. Uh, that's got to be some fear of Kenny S, just not even wanting to deal with him, knowing he's playing at these cars, just not even wanting to mess with it. 
We're going to go for some nades up there in Kerrigan. Once again, I mean, this so far has been very thorough on TSM's part. Getting up Catwalk, getting the info. There it is. Kerrigan even pre-firing the likely spot that Kenny would play from. This is all about setting up the fact if you want to fall into mid control, you have to push back that defense on Catwalk so there's no early flanks coming in. Well, we'll see if that fear of Kenny here is warranted because they're going to get a chance to fight him now. He's out on long. He's got the AWP in hand, carrying it in close. Perfect flashbang just shot him down. That's how you do it. Nobody else has done bomb inside, but Happy showing up to take down Carrigan. That bomb plant is going through, and a nice grenade in the middle of them. Could have done maybe a little bit more, I think. Still a 4v4. Dupree going to go down. Apex sneaking up close and Sipnik sprays. He wins that fight against Apex, but he goes down to Happy. Device going to get a shot. Can he get a bit more? Gets a second one. Nice mechanics here, and it's going to be up to NBK in a 1v2. Creeping on in, he actually crab walks Device, and it's going to be Cajun down on the low ground. And NBK is holding it down. Cajun going to stop it. He jumps once, and he's off the bomb. NBK not going to try just yet. Cajun, he jumps down in his face, and he clutches it. NBK, he gets the kills. And I think there's going to be barely enough time here. He's holding it down. Oh, no! TSM! They get the round regardless. Talk about a split-second play. And in the end, it works, because what I was about to say is, Anders, Moses, if TSM are going to win this map, they have to confront their fears. You don't go through here. life, you know, running away. You gotta <laughs> go head on, and that's exactly what Kerrigan did. He took on Kenny. He won them that opening. Was it, was it, was it Roosevelt that said, Roosevelt that said, uh, chasing, the, the, the fun in chasing grizzly bears is confronting your own fear? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Kenny has Wasn't he the there? one who rode a moose as well? I mean, a few yeah. things going on there. Crazy man. That, that's the thing we've talked about with Kerrigan, though, all of that, between the analysts, the casters, we've always said he's that, he's that in-game leader that when he calls his tactic, he's the one leading the way, leads from the front, so he's the one jumping down, getting a nice pop flash from his teammate to take Kenny S out, opens up that sight. They almost lose it if NBK just doesn't fall all the way out of that sight during that one-on-one, -on -one, he, he wins that round. Yeah, if he just gets up on the ledge, I mean, number of things that could have changed completely. Ifs. Ifs, 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 and no surprise to see TSM saying, hey, well, Cats works now. Let's go ahead and take the fight again, but happy this time playing from Goose. Different change on the position. Kenny, though, just barely missing that shot, but he will be able to get the pre. No exit, no passing here, and Kenny going to get headshot. Magnificent shot by Zipnix. Back to a three-on-three, -three. and now TSM, they can plant for Cat, and there isn't too much that NBK can do about it. Oh, Device, he stepped it up last time. He's going to have to do it again here. That bomb is not down yet. Sipnix has it, and if he dies, it might actually fall over the ledge. That would be a disaster. They're coming up short as well. Cajun trying to stop it. It's Sipnix again with another kill, making it a double. They're lined up. they got to move out of this position. Kiyoshima takes one down, and Device close range. AWP, no scope on Kiyoshima. Device, now is your chance. NBK is close here. And he's still got 14 seconds left, one clock bullet, it's gonna happen! Device, he takes him down! What a clutch! And that's gonna be TSM now, jumping up to nine. That is so insane, because Envy fought that bomb site the whole way, not letting the bomb plant down. The rotation came in quick enough, so instead of falling back, playing a complete retake, they battle for every inch, and Device wins it there in the end with some beautiful work with the AWP. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. They stopped the bomb, and there it is. Device is fired up now. He gets the tag on Kiyoshima as well, thus weakening the B defense. Apex, though, looking to get clever here, but Kerrigan's having none of that. Just annihilates him close. Apex never knew what hit him. That was a dunk. He jumps over the edge of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, a 10-5 scoreline in favor of TSM would be hard for Envy to swallow. That's a lot of rounds to give up when you're on the CT side. We'll see if they can recover from this. Nice pop flash in from Kenny, but there's just too many people there, and he ends up going down. Now NBK spraying down one and very nearly two. In fact, they're all very low on health. It's going to be a double. He's got the pistol out. He knows there's a third man here. Can he do it? 5-7 in hand and very close. They've actually turned this around, Envy. You cannot underestimate them. Carrigan has the bomb, which is fortunate because Cajun is controlling the middle. And I'm not sure, could he have heard Kyo walking away there? Yeah, I think he did. And now he's going to be sneaking on in. They're actually doubling up on Kiyoshima, who's alone on the bomb site in the middle. Cajun looking for the kill, but he can't quite do it. It's very close. And Kiyoshima in the back lines. He might just be the linchpin here. Cajun going down and Carrigan alone in the 1v3. He has no idea that Kiyo's in there. And that's going to be a 9-6 finish. What a nicely handled round from Envy. Right, well, there was MBK pushing long, and, you know, Kenny didn't get that initial kill, but he dealt so much damage to Kerrigan that when Kerrigan came over to try and help out, he's like, I can't, I can't take this fight. I got red HP, I'm low. 
So NBK does just enough damage in there at the end. Cajun B was really the only one that was able to do anything and just couldn't find the kill. So, in my opinion, this is uh, so not a, maybe I think TSM got away with a little bit more, but it's not really a disaster for Envy here. If they no. win this pistol round, they're right back in the game. Absolutely, mm -hmm. this is uh, I mean this is one of the more even maps, but still kind of feels like it's coming back towards the T side, right? So Kerrigan, I mean he's led his team to victory in this first half at least. He's got the pages out as well. I want to call him like Professor Kerrigan at this point because he's just going through it, rifling through, taking a look at what they need to be prepared for going into this second half of the. Uh, well, second map of this ESL1 semi-final. So what do you think? What's the pistol round call for, for Envy? I, I would expect it to be something fast-paced on this map. I use those clocks, get to an area. I don't think it'll be as calculated as TSM as they work their way down mid, making sure they pushed everything out. I, I think, honestly, they might send a couple out long quickly just to grab control. A couple out long? Two to three. Or like the one true strat. <laughs> you know what it is? Rush B. Rush, Rush B, B, baby. YOLO B every day. Well, here's the thing you said, you know, you have to face your fears. This is this is a side of the map that TSM doesn't get to choose where and when they face their fears. Kenny with that AWP can be very mobile and bring the fight to him wherever he chooses. So that's the scariest part for uh, for TSM going into the second half. Well, for anyone who's ever watched The Wire, you'll know the other part of that question is, what's the thrill for the bear? <laughs> if you're confronting your own fears. I think Kenny's ready to answer that question in just about any moment. Still waiting for the second half to get underway. If you are just joining us, then you are more or less right on time. We've still obviously got another semi-finals, which is uh, VP versus Fnatic, and that's going to be a blast as well. And then the grand finals much later today. I got to imagine that matchup's going to just be a bloodbath. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, Taz, the Tasmanian Devil is going to be unleashed. Neo opping as well. Yeah, it's going to be good. But... That's going to be coming up later. Now we get into the pistol round of the second half. Envious on the offense and Solomid on the defense here. And pretty healthy spread, actually. Quite a bit of Kevlar bought by both teams, so they are looking for a bit of a melee, but nothing really fast-paced from Envy. They are looking to get control of mid, and we see just that, holding to make sure that TSM can't get cheeky either by pushing out into B-Halls or out long. But it will be action A, it looks like. Yeah, Carrigan is out here, and he, if they get close, he's done for. We're missing a couple of shots, and he tries to reload. He's going to go down. Sipnik's in a spot that I don't like very much here. Again, if they get too close, he can't do anything. Maybe that also explains the heavy rotation on TSM. Nice shot from Cajun, and Sipnik's picking up a kill. What is going on? They're bringing it back here. Sipnik with another one, and he's not going to get the third one, but Cajun will. And that's a huge shot down. Envy had a lot going for them in that round. Yeah, not a great spot for Zipnix to be in, but it's perfect when you have Cajun B there at the end just to give you that space to work with. Gets that first kill, draws the aggro of the terrorist pushing up long, and then Zipnix goes to work. Yeah, exactly. Zipnix can then peek behind that, and he has that split-second element of surprise to work with. So now, I mean, no surprise to see Envy going for the force buy here. NBK's got his scout, and he's actually standing in suicide. Does he get it? Oh! Close. <laughs> Real he close. He the actually gets the... Oh, again! <laughs> MVK, stop! I can't handle this. Time for Device to give up on this on, and just leave MVK alone here in the middle because that <laughs> is... that's outrageous. You little look at him, he goes immediately to back platform and be where you can only get headshotted and there's an entry attempt from Happy, but Kerrigan shuts it down. Oh, but they are looking like they want to try and get towards uh, Cat if they can here. The fresh smoke's going on by uh, TSM. Still plenty of time here. So Envy, they just need to keep their cool in this situation. They've got the smokes out. There's a single one left, and that's on Cajun. So you can use that to buy more time here on the A site. But Envy have a whole lot of time to work with. And they even have some utility on their side still as well. The smoke on Kenny, the double flash on Apex. And it looks like they are going to be setting it up now. Look at the timing of the smoke here on Cajun, though. They're trying to get out, and he's going to put it up just as they do, and that's a very annoying. Now they either have to commit or fall back, and they're going to full commit to it. Cajun close, sprays down Kenny, and this is looking like maybe a bomb plant until Sipnik shows up. Great position, and NBK Kiyoshima, they can't really recover this situation, and so far, nobody dying, and nobody will die for TSM, all alive. Very good round. You you can see the confidence that the Envy players have on those on those second round buys because Kiyoshima doesn't even help attempt to try and take over that bomb site. He just drops straight into CT spawn, believing in his teammates to get the entry kills, forcing the rotates where he'll be in perfect position. Doesn't work out that time, but that's part of the reason why they have success with him so much. And the money for Kenny here is why is pointing out not that great for a potential all buy later on, and that. 
probably will be important. So that element of surprise might go away as far as we were talking earlier, you know, confronting the fears, etc. Kenny might be delayed in that. He has shown that he is very capable with the AK, but still, to have that off, that would be a huge benefit for his team. Zip makes is going to start things off here by picking off NBK, rotates in to take out Apex as well, and Cajun just locking down Cat. Happy in his usual lurk role is going to get destroyed by Device, and that is a 12th round on the board for Solo Mid. They're four away from tying up this series one to one in maps. Oh, wow. So what YNK was trying to point out just before we cut the camera there was that Kenny was literally $50 away from his AWP. And, and <laughs> he would have probably gone for it for an AWP, you know, armor. He Absolutely. 4,700. But then that's a full buy. At least he gets the full buy, all nades, all Kevlar, everything, right? So that's still a full buy with AKs. Oh. And that Kajin, might, that might actually beast. be better with the kit that, uh, the kit that Team Solomon's running. Three Famas and one P90. Yeah, existence is grinning right now. This is some sexy stuff, but they're gonna change it up. They decide not to stick it. And now Envy at least might not have figured out that the boost was going on, but they were definitely very careful about the uh, the option being there for TSM. Wow, runs. That was very close into freeze. It's not, he's gonna go for it again and he gets caught. NBK, how does he know? First it was the door in the middle, then it's the follow up with the shots with the smoke. You can't, you can't handle game sense. That's it, NBK man, living up to his name. And now Zipnix holding from CT. He's gonna be able to hold the line here, stop Apex, but Kenny S is close enough to get the refrag. Kerrigan though, putting an end to Happy, and Device steps in to remove NBK. Kenny S and Kiyoshima, the last two alive in this two on three. With 40 seconds left, they don't need to overcommit. They can take their time and try and bait one out, but Kerrigan not interested in that. Shuts down Kenny, and now it's all on Kyo. This is a sickening round from Carrigan. He shouldn't have got either of those kills. Kiyoshima gonna go down. P90 spray from Device. And it's 13 to 6. TSM. They really are trying to give us that third map, which will be on Inferno as well. I mean, it's very nearly the perfect map to win this kind of series on. Oh, it absolutely is. But first, TSM's gotta end it because we've seen so many times Envy go down and then just find something and it clicks. And they just run the score back up. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it this time around. A bit of a flash out long here. Envy, they will slow down behind it, which is good for them because there was a pretty big presence oh. here. Three people, Molotov and HE grenade combination. Now they're going to go for it. And Kerrigan playing close with the AK. Sprays down one. There might be a lot more coming around the corner. Cajun actually helping out here. Got the Tech-9 out. They don't have armor, so these bullets are doing a lot of damage. And that's going to be a shutdown. Only Kerrigan going down, so not that bad. And TSM's done so good in this match. One of the one of the keys we talked about before even cash began was managing the amount of times that those those buys from Envy, those upgraded pistols, can really damage you. There's so much money in the bank behind TSM. They've done a great job of that on Dust 2. Well, now Envy is they're going to have a lot of hard work ahead of them here. There is 11k on Cage and B to start, but double on play for TSM along with the double op from Envy. So we'll see who actually comes out ahead in this one because they're all going to be looking for those picks just to shut down a portion of the map or, in Envious's case, create an opening. Sipnix once again top fragging, and I know they had a bit of a conversation with him a while ago. They are trying to talk him in, motivate him, motivate him a little bit more, and whatever they said, it definitely worked. Sipnix is like, he's focused 100%. I can't remember I've seen him play like this for a very, very long time. It's a real pleasure here at 14 to 6. Device not going to get the shot there, but he might be trying again. He's fighting MBK after all. You've got to be a bit careful. Cajun up at the A bomb side. The pre down in CT spawn doing some damage to Kenny. Flashbangs out a couple of times. The device going to re peek it, and MBK goes down. Sick shot by Device, just annihilating MBK. Well, now it's going to be four players left here for Envy. Kenny fairly low. He's been legged already down to 17. And Apex just hoping to catch somebody out of position here on Cat, waiting for the rotation to come in from his teammates, but with only 35 seconds left, it's going to be do or die time. Cajun in position. This is the key position here to hold this site, and he's looking to cross. Apex opens it up by taking out Dupree, though. That's a huge kill, but they're getting bogged down. They're actually hesitating. They're rotating back around, and they're going to change things up, but is that the time for these shenanigans? Device removes Apex from the board, and Envy, they need to make the play right away. And there it is. What is that? Kenny jumps in and it just takes out the vice immediately. A three on three and just in the nick of time, Envy will get control of the B site and get the plan. 
What is going on? Now it's going to be a 3v3 retake. Carrigan running for the fire to try and get here quick enough. Kenny on the back lines. He's very low. One bullet and he's going to be out of it. And Carrigan jumping in. A lot of confidence. But Kiyoshima takes him out. And now it's down to Siplix and Cajun. And then not going to go for it. They feel like it's not worth it. Maybe some exit frags. And that's very, very important. Getting some kills on Envy here means they've got so much less. But the Frenchmen, they are saving both the orbs. So four orbs being saved currently on either team. <laughs> Wow. That, 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 that's the thing, both sides of the map, when you're an offensive team and you have double op, it's going to slow things down. That's why you saw the timer start to get low when they executed that 25 seconds. It's because you have to, you have so much economy invested in those AWPs, they have to find the picks for you before you can decide what to do. On the other side, as the defense, if the, if the opponents do manage to take that bomb site, it's so hard to retake them. There's not a lot of mobility, not a lot of, you know, you can't search around when you're entering through choke points, so just both deciding to save that weapon. Well, Double orb in the middle, they fired in the exact same instant. I love that double sound there, the echo, but not going to hit anybody on the TSM side. All right, now, just one mistake from Envy here could cost them the map. They don't have a lot of money. Oh, not going to hit timing. that shot either. That's so very clever. scary. So clever to go for that counter boost top mid, just changing up the angle. And Apex, unfortunately for him, finds nobody in CT, so they're going to have to change things up here, Envy. Apex just taking point. He's got a man behind him, Kenny as well. So that, that is a huge tag team duo right there as well. They work so well together playing off. But again, timing impeccable here. Solo mid, they get that smoke down just in time to stop Envy from getting a peek. And once again on TSM side, no mid control whatsoever. Dupree just spotting it from the bomb site. But there's Device with an opening pick. Five on four now. MBK, one of the really heavy hitters as well. It's gone down. And the clock is ticking low. They've got a man playing up on Catwalk who's just trying to see if he can maybe create a distraction as the rest of the team seems to be gearing up for a bit of a B push. Apex, if he gets a kill, that might really sell it. He almost got that one on Carrigan, but not quite close to the window. Device C set 75. He spots a man. He knows what's up. Underhand throw Molotov to buy more time, but they're coming through anyway. Dupree goes down, and Device is going to drop as well. Envy. They just do not care. Happy gonna get the kill on Cajun. And it's on Carrigan and Sipnix here, and they have the rounds to play with. TSM can stop fighting this and just recommit in a different round, but you've got to respect Envy for putting it all on the line here. These ops for Envy just bailing them out of some tough situations because TSM looks like they have the advantage in these in these last couple of rounds, but Kenny has with that crazy shot to enter into the B site last round. This time, it's, this time it's happy entering into that site and clearing out the defense. And now once again another save round out of T or another round where TSM is forced to save their weapons. Little do they know they could ruin each other's days pretty quick here. Kerrigan standing very close by. But both of these teams are going to be looking to hold on to the guns. Unfortunately for TSM, they weren't able to find that second AWP. So Kerrigan just going to have to hold on to the M4. But Envy, they do succeed in holding on to both sniper rifles. So we'll see how they decide to use them this time around. It's going to save a lot of money here for Envy. And this, this is just the mentality, the grind. They're showing that they are capable, perhaps, of taking it one round at a time, one step at a time to get back into this game. If they could force Solo Mid to spend all of their money, which they pretty much just have done here, Solo Mid, if Envy can force Solo Mid to Eco, break the economy, and then limit the utility after that, there is a chance for them to get back into this. Surely not. So many rounds. I can't believe that it could be true. Device almost hitting that shot, but not going to be quite. Another eight rounds in a row, and Envy would actually steal the map away. But there's also a chance for overtime. I don't know if I believe it quite yet. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to show me at this point. Happy's in the middle, ready. Not gonna actually. Well, he does smoke off CT spawn, but it's a very early smoke for a push. So it might be almost a fake here. It's so interesting that they're all grouping up in B tunnels with over a minute left. With the two AWPs, they're not working picks anywhere across the map. And look at the defense. Three members in this site. This is perfect for TSM. Exactly. They're going to be prepared. And there it is. Device spots MBK. He saw somebody else go by, but Dupree's in position to stop him. Device there to shut down Apex. And it's a complete and utter disaster for Envy. Happy the last man alive here. Gets the point blank shot on Zipnix, but Zipnix, he was just fodder. They threw him in there to get confirmation. Now they know where Happy's playing from. Solomid have nothing to worry about in this round. There's the flash, the final kill. And TSM are up on map point. Seven map points coming up. Just so, so curious from Team Envious. Just trying to bully their way into that B bomb site. It's where they found success in the last couple of rounds, so they figured they might as well go back to it. But 
A great another another situation where TSM just adapts. Both these teams have been adapting really well, and you were watching these rounds go back and forth because of those adaptations. Seven map points. That is so hard to deal with if you're on the Envy team. Winning that first map must have felt great, but running into TSM early on, what was the score? Seven and one before Envy really started to pick it up, and they did a pretty good job of coming back into that first half, but this second half has proven very difficult indeed, and they have tech lines and a single AK here to try and save themselves. Yeah, that's the wild thing. I mean, of course, this, these guys are like the kings of the tech nine, so you can never count them out, even when they're on pistols. We have to see what Happy's going to be capable of here with the AK. With the AK. And look at Sibnix. He's actually mirroring the position that I think Happy was playing earlier when they were on the CT side. He never got to use it, but I'm curious to see if it's going to be put into play here from the CT side this time around. Three people over at that long site, and there's Apex going down, so Sibnix makes it work. He's been the star player for both these maps for TSM, and it's wonderful to see. Cajun going to drop, though, and Sibnix looking for a bit more. We've got Carrigan down here as well. They're in the bomb site, and this will be a bomb plant for Envy, so now they've got a bit of a chance here. Happy going down, though, and the retake is on. 4v3, it's pistols and nothing else here on the French side. Dupree closing in on short as well, close to Envy. He's got the tech nine. He tries one, tries again. Dupree still got the advantage, and he ends up finding the frag. And now it's all over. TSM, we're gonna go to Inferno. Yeah, the gloves came off that time. Kerrigan, he was here to fight. He made damn sure that they were going to go to a third map. And in the playoffs, this is the first series to make it to that third map. In the quarterfinals, it's been nothing but two zeros. Now it gets interesting. Now this is going to get real tough. Envy, they have to recover themselves, the mental game here. It's all going to be on them now to calm down, figure out what went wrong, and prepare for Inferno. Yeah, this is... Uh, that, that's, that's a great response from Team Solo Mid on their map. It's just dominant performance. Both sides, Envy made that little bit of a run, but outside of that, TSM just, just crushed him. Now, because Envy have already played Inferno a couple of times, I'm wondering if Carrigan has been writing down a bunch of notes because they've been very, very scary. But we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, we're going to take that. When it comes to it, guys, we're going to take a very short commercial break, and then we'll hear from our analysts who are going to break down that second map, Dust 2.